What makes someone gay? Science is trying to get it straight. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, this is an interesting one. This is actually an interesting video. We're gonna, I've, I'm, a, I'm curious in this today. Okay, so what makes someone gay? Try, science is trying to figure it out. Alice D Dreger and Big Think. You know, that's a very interesting conversation that I feel like doesn't really matter. <laughs> From like, This is one of those things where it comes to like, oh, why, why are we asking this question? Like what? Why are we asking this question? There's two different answers. The one answer is like we're just genuinely curious, and that is totally fine. You know, we're just trying to we're just trying to get the facts straight. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Trying to get the facts straight. <laughs> that's that's funny. Number two is maybe we're trying to figure out what makes people gay so we can stop it, <laughs> which is just which is which is unnecessary. Um, I'm going to assume it's the first one though, because a lot of science you know, science smarty farties think that you know they want to figure everything out. Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's probably a mixture, like everything else, a mixture between environmental and, 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 um, biological factors, you know, like there are people that, uh, are usually get like addicted to like gambling. They have a biological predisposition to like, have, what, what do they call them? Uh, like addictive personalities. So they have a higher chance of getting addicted to things. I think it's something like that. That doesn't necessarily matter. You know that there's a level of environmental factor though, because you know that there are uh, the people that go to prison tend to become, uh, gay in some capacity, at least while they're there, because they're in an environment where men are the only available option. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? Gay is not all hereditary. But anyway, let's get this wild going. We don't actually know the extent to which gender is socially constructed, because you can't do an experiment where you remove culture and see what happens. So we don't know to what extent what we see as gendered patterns are the result of sex, biological sex, males and females. That's fair. We I know that. that gender differs according to culture, but we also know that there are patterns that appear to be fairly universal in terms of gender norms. And the ones that are more universal are more likely to probably have a sex basis to it, an evolved sex basis. That is to say, a biological basis. That makes perfect sense. It's so crazy because I've talked to people before. They're like, gender is 100% like social construct. It's like gender is a social construct, but like there are still biological factors there that like you can observe across like every society like i think every society thinks tits are fucking like women, female tits are hot so like i'm yeah so like there's something that makes you think that those are hot you know now <laughs> it doesn't mean you can't destigmatize it or change that or socialize it to be different but like yeah there's still biological factors for males and females so for example who which gender serves a very important meal may be different by different cultures. So in some cultures, a man will serve a very important meal versus a woman. So for example, think about in the United States that historically speaking, the father carves the turkey on mm. Thanksgiving. But um, in general, women prepare food, historically speaking. So what we know is that these kinds of things can differ by culture, but that there are some universals. And one of the universals we find, for example, is in childhood play that we find that um, children who are girls tend to do more social play. They tend to do more social role play. Children uh, who are boys tend to do more uh, competitive play. They tend to do more uh, play that mimics um, aggression or that mimics sport. And I, that makes sense to me because my wife was telling me, she's like, I used to play like house, but like serious house, like not like bullshit. She was like, you know, like serious shit. For me, bro, I used to tackle other boys into the ground. We would just beat the fuck out of each other, bro. Like, we would take sticks we would find in the woods, and we would we would slam them with the force of a thousand suns into the other's, like, fucking leg. Like, their, like, lower leg, like, into our calves. Like, we, that's what we did, bro. That's what we did. And I grew up without a father, so <laughs> I was socialized. To, I, don't, I wasn't really socialized to be a man so much. This, you just you just fuck each other up, bro. Girls didn't really like to do that, bro. That doesn't mean that there are that are all men did that or all girls would do what girls typically do, but it's just the general pattern of it. And it was good fun, but now like you're old, bro. I used to, bro. You know what I used to do? I used to when I was younger, my friend, like much younger, my friend had a girlfriend and I liked her. So like we would hang out in front of my house and I would jump off my stoop to impress her. You think a, you think girls are jumping off stoops to impress guys? No, I was I you know I was just a violent idiot engaged in something. And I thought like, oh, getting hurt equals strong. Or you know what I mean? Like it's fucking crazy. Mimics sometimes um, building. Okay. And so there are these kinds of patterns, but that doesn't mean everybody fits them. 
and it's really interesting actually too if you look cross culturally scientists find evidence that this may have it's not just gender that there's a sexuality component to it too so boys who are um, going to grow up and be gay and we know who they are because of retrospectively they grow up to be gay they're what's called androphilic that is to say they're attracted to males and you know what's interesting about that i have a i have there's someone in my family i don't get too specific but someone in my family um is gay and i remember telling his dad once when i was like young and he was like really young too i was probably like, like fucking 15 or less i was like he's gay and uh my family member was like okay who cares so that was it but you could like kind of tell bro i don't know in my experience you could kind of tell bro you could tell a little bit there's nothing wrong with that but you could tell maybe it's more hereditary than i thought i don't know i mean that would make more sense i don't really know the majority of females are also attracted to males so most females are androphilic and a small percentage of boys are andro will grow up to be androphilic okay we know that historically speaking cross it sounds like androphilia is a mental disorder because like why would you honestly be attracted to men if you really think about it like what's like men are fucking annoying and dumb you know what i mean <laughs> what the fuck dude that sounds like a mental issue to me fucking crazy culturally they tend to be more feminine in terms of their interests they're more interested in um, social role play, for example. They're more interested in helping their mothers. They're more interested in associating with girls as young children and <laughs> more interested in dressing as girls, for example. That doesn't mean that they're girls, but it does suggest to us that sexuality and gender have interplayed components in them, that gender isn't just about social role, that it has something to do with sexuality. That's fucking crazy. I don't know why this is blowing my mind through my asshole. That's really interesting. So like maybe it's more hereditary than I thought. And like there seems to be like it's not even like gender roles. It's more like sex roles, which I felt like is true because you could tell that there's like a masculine versus like a feminine person in every relationship that I've observed. Because, you know, I, I know a lot of gay people. They're very sexually attracted to me. Gay men like think I'm a sexy bear. And it's true. And if you think that I'm if you don't understand that, then understand this, baby. Ah. But I know a lot of gay people in the relationships, and there tends to be like a more do like masculine and more feminine person in the relationship. Even if they both may be more feminine or even both more masculine, there's usually like a masculine versus a feminine person there. Somebody who's like a little more, you know, whatever. Um, that's interesting, bro. And that there's a reason females end up with these kinds of patterns and males end up with these kinds of patterns. And when you have a male who's attracted to males, he ends up with a little bit more of the female pattern. And in some circumstances, if you have a girl and she's attracted to girls, she'll end up with a little bit more of the male pattern in childhood. So gender and sexual orientation seem to have... I wonder how that works, though, because like I, I do observe that more... Yeah, I guess I do observe that more gay men are more feminine and more lesbian women are more masculine, but there are still... It's just so interesting. I guess like like butch, what do you call them, butch lesbians? I guess that's a le not like a, a highest percent of lesbians. I don't know, man. This is definitely a very interesting. It's not always true, of course. I don't think that she's saying that. It's just interesting because there are like femme lesbians. And I think there's more feminine lesbians than masculine lesbians. But I think it's masculine in relative terms. I wonder how... I wonder... I don't know. I wonder how much of that is like socialized. Like if you have a like, I don't know, man. It's so interesting. It's just a lot of information to me. Most of yeah, most lesbians are pretty feminine, but some, I feel like all most gay men are pretty feminine too. At least the gay men that I know, like you could tell they're gay. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I don't see a lot of like masculine lesbians though. That's what I'm like. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm like really wrapping around my head is I feel like a lot of lesbians and a lot of gay guys are very ma feminine. You know what I'm saying? Like most people, like it's very interesting. This is really blowing my fucking mind because I would have assumed that most um, like gay women would have been very masculine. You know what I'm saying? But like it seems like everybody's feminine except for straight men. Well, some of them are, but you get what I'm saying, like generally speaking. You mess a lot of masculine straight women. Yeah, my wife is a pretty masculine straight woman. I love her to death. She's fucking hot. I feminized her with my hard fucking wiggler, though. But then... <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. But she thought she was going to be a gold star lesbian until she met me. She was like, God damn. You know, because I gave... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now we're in love and married. Imagine like 20 years from now, she breaks up with me because she really wanted to be with women. I don't know. Anyway, that's an intrusive thought. Let's continue. Sort of some connection to each other. But it's not a perfect connection in terms of absolute correlation. And so we can't say that 
we can easily predict what would be somebody's gender role or sexual orientation simply by looking at some of the components. Evolution would naturally favor heterosexuality because that's how you get babies. And so if we're thinking about genes trying to produce genes, it would make no sense to have genes that would lead to people who don't reproduce because the, those genes would not be reproduced. That's an interesting thing to bring up, but like I also, my understanding is that evolution is a fact, but it's the theory of how we evolve. So the, the theory of how we evolve, uh, it's like different ways. Like, oh, maybe, and it doesn't mean that there's only one aspect of evolution. Like part of it might be like, oh, we need particular traits. So we are, our bodies grow to adhere to those traits. Like, oh, we live closer to the water. So over a million years, we start to develop gills or whatever. Or it's like, oh, here's some, sh I'm gonna throw some shit at a wall and see what sticks. That's the one that makes like, so you see people that are born with like six fingers. Like the theory could be like, oh, that's because we needed six fingers. Or maybe it's just like evolution is like, well, is this gonna work? And they just start chucking shit everywhere, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe it's a, uh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. That said, we know cross culturally gay people exist. So we know that no. that's a natural variation in the population. And Maybe they just want to reduce the amount of people. They're like, hey, let's make a gene so that, you know what I'm saying? And so then scientists ask the really interesting question, why is that there? Why does that not disappear over time? Because at least in theory, that should lead to lower reproductive fitness, which means it should lead to fewer babies. Yeah. And so it should, it should fade out, evolutionarily speaking. Um, one possibility is that it's a side effect that Human variation is good for the species, and so uh, evolution is responding to the situation not by reducing necessarily everything that doesn't work, but saying, let's keep throwing up variation, and some of it will work in some environments, and some of it will work in uh, other environments. Hey, see, I knew that. I said something like that, bro. I'm a little bit, I'm just a little bit of a smarty pants, huh? I'm a little bit of a smarty pants. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's being a varied species makes a species more resilient. So it may be the case that being gay, if you're born that way, is just a variation on a theme, and it will show up every now and then just because variations show up. Hmm. But um, some scientists find some evidence that there may actually be advantages to a family of having a certain percentage of the children be gay. And um, Why? This is work done, for example, by Paul Vasey at how, the University of How? What? That's, That's interesting. University of Lethbridge. And he's been looking at uh, the population in Samoa as well as other places. But Samoa has a cultural system that actually recognizes that a certain percentage of the boys are going to grow up to be um, androphilic. They're going to be interested in men sexually. How do they How do they recognize that? Like, do they accept it or do they actually like, uh, what is it? Okay. And they actually have a whole cultural system for it. They have a third gender category called the fafafine. And when a boy, it becomes evident is that kind of boy, the child is raised as a girl and becomes a woman culturally speaking. But what the fuck? That's I feel like that's really wrong. And I'm, I don't care if you think I'm insensitive. Because to me, that bothers me. Because I feel like the way that you should raise kids is... Well, don't say it's fucked up. It's like a cultural thing. And I understand why they, they, they probably do it. But I think that the way that you should raise kids is like... I don't know. Like, I feel like you should just kind of let kids do their thing. I feel like... Um, you know, if your young boys and your young girls are going to generally gravitate towards a general area anyway, there's no reason to necessarily hard reinforce it. I'm not saying that you you can't, but like like for instance, if I have a boy, we're going to put the room together. The girl, we're going to put the room together. We're probably going to do dragons regardless. You know, you do you. You you can make your girl a princess, whatever. I mean, it's probably going to happen. Your you know dads usually treat their young girls like they're princesses, and you know blah 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 blah. blah. You get it. Um, but like it's like let your kid experiment. Like if my kid was. You know, I, w I wouldn't be like, okay, I've, I think my kid's gay, so I'm going to make him a girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be like, okay, my kid might be gay. Let him explore that, figure that out. If he's gay, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's probably not the right way to go uh, in general. I'm not like criticizing the entire culture. I'm just saying that I don't believe in that ideology in general. Because I think we need to let kids be kids. And I feel like that's the problem. It's like we're, we're too like one way or the other. Like the gender conversation nowadays feels a little bit reactionary in a negative way in the sense where it's like traditionally we reinforce that boys are boys and girls are girls. And then we might, one of the kids might express themselves to be just trans. And instead of letting them feel that out and feel what that means to them and let them work through that, it's like, okay, you're trans. Well, you're fucking trans now. Here's a dress. Here's nails and polish. Here's this, that. Rather than letting your kid just like feel their shit out 
and experiment with it to what makes them happy rather than like enforce a particular role that they have to adhere to because they're trans. Because you know what? I feel like if you would enforce, let's say you have a, a young boy and they, they, they say that they're a girl. If you let them feel it out, they might just be like, you know what? I identify as non-binary and I'm a little bit more feminine as a girl, but they'll be comfortable with being a boy. But if you reinforce it, they must be a girl like really hard without them exploring and coming to that conclusion themselves then all you're really doing is like you're forcing you're, you're doing you're doing the, the same as as a dad as somebody would do when they would force them to be a boy rather than just let them feel what it means to them you're like okay you're a girl or which is the same as somebody go okay you're a boy you're not actually a girl you're a boy like you know what i'm saying like i'm, I'm trying to communicate this i want to make sure i'm doing it right so here's a scenario where let's say you have like a biological boy like you have like a biological a bb a biological boy and let's say they express like hey i'm trans I would be like, okay, you feel that out, what that means to you. But then I feel like there's people that are like, oh, if you say you're a girl, even if you're only like, let's say this is kids only like six. If you say you're a girl, well, then you're a girl. So now we're going to like, we're you're, we're gonna we're gonna like we're gonna reinforce that you're a girl. I feel like that's just as toxic as if you reinforce that there's still a boy without the young kid figuring. Let them just chill the fuck out and just be like, oh, if they if there's if it's a boy biological boy and they say that they're a girl let them just feel out what that means to them because maybe that's not to the truth maybe they're just a kid and they've observed uh female gender roles and they think that they align with that more rather than they think that they're actually a girl but they say that they're a girl because that's the conversation that we're having nowadays so let them explore that because then maybe they will become a girl later on but it'll be a more healthy conclusion or maybe they realize that they're a boy but they're like a little bit more of a feminine boy right and then that's like the only difference or maybe they'll just be a boy and it's a phase we don't really know it's one of those things where, like, just let your kid be a kid. Because if you you force the connection, you're you're still forcing a gender role onto your kid. Let them just figure out what the fuck it means. Like, just let them relax and figure out what it means as long as they can function in society. Like, I feel like that's that's why that's that's how I'm gonna try to treat it. If my kid's like, oh, I'm a girl, um, I'm gonna be like, okay, you do you. You know, I'm not gonna go out and run and buy him a fucking. Because I feel like a lot of people they want to be they want to be good people. So they're like, okay, if my if my young if my young biological son's saying that they're a girl, like I really want the, to be the supportive of that, and so I'm going to like enforce that. But it's like I don't know if that's the best idea. Like maybe you just kind of like support them, not enforce them. Does that make sense? That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> but doesn't change her body at all. But partners with men. Um, so in our culture, that would be called transgenderism. But in this culture, it's a third gender category that absorbs what in our culture might just turn out to be gay men. And what Paul has found is that when he looks at the families that have fafafine within them, they, the fafafine are um, not using up a lot of resources because they're not themselves having children. These are big family um, cultures. Interesting. But they do take their own earnings and they direct it at their nieces and nephews. And that means you have more adults producing more resources for a smaller number of children. Interesting. That's an interesting perspective, bro. I don't. I know that to you guys, you probably were just like, okay, cool. But to me, that like fucking blew my mind a little bit because, like, I don't know. Like, I know multiple gay people in my life that like aren't even looking necessarily for like a partner, and then I know gay people that are married that like they might want to adopt, but they're like they don't know exactly what they want to do. So it's so interesting that like maybe we are so rigid in the way that we're supposed to construct relationships that we don't take a step back and think like, wait, what if this? Right. So it's like, hey, you're supposed to get married and have babies. Right. So it's traditionally it's been a man and a woman. You get married and you have babies. Right. And so then we had like the gay rights movements because gay, gay people should get married. Right. So then it's like, OK, men now men and men can get married and now women and women can get married. And society says have babies, but like, what if some of these people don't necessarily want to have babies? And I, I knew I had aunts that don't want to have kids either. I'm not saying that this is exclusive to gay people, but I have aunts and like uncles that don't want to have kids either. But like, what if, what if like, if we didn't forcefully, or if we didn't like have such a, like a heavy enforcement of have, have babies, have babies, have babies when you get married, maybe they would get together and they wouldn't even want to have kids necessarily, but they might want to support like the babies of like their their brothers or their sisters more than have their own kid necessarily it's just very interesting and i've seen straight people like do this as well where they don't want to have kids either but they want to be like you know they want to be some kind of um 
figure for their for their their nieces and nephews. I've I've seen that too in straight people. But like, what if maybe there is a predisposition for gay people to not want to do that? And I'm not saying like restrict gay people from having kids. That's fucking dumb. But I'm just saying that like, what if like we a lot of times I feel like in life if there isn't a category for a particular thing, then no people don't tend to gravitate towards that particular thing, even if they want to gravitate towards that particular thing. So like in society, if we created like a category for people where it's like oh um you maybe you get together with somebody and you have babies or maybe you just get together with somebody and then you're just like supporting other people's babies because that's what you like to do something like that like i feel like more people might be like hey that makes sense to me a lot of times we create categories as representations of the ways that we feel about particular things so that other people can go wait a minute that makes sense i actually like that i want to like kind of raise a kid but also fuck that noise but I feel like pressured to do it or to not do it at all. So like maybe maybe this is like, I don't know, bro. This is a lot. This is very interesting. This is like a lot of interesting information like shooting into my butthole right now. It's very cool. It's just like a very interesting stuff. So biologically, there may be an advantage for families to have a certain number of gay children because those people will not reproduce, but they will take care of the nieces and nephews. And so overall, the population, the genetics of the family will be continued on because that family has a genetic advantage. And you know, when you think about it, we have this sort of stereotype of the gay uncle who takes care of the nieces and nephews in terms of providing for them and providing extra true. resources. Kind and they're true, not yeah. spending it on their own kids. They're spending it on their sisters and brothers' children that might be a possible evolutionary explanation for why it is that we see homosexuality persist in um, the human system. Interesting. It's also the case we know from work done by uh, Ray Blanchard in Canada that a certain number of men who will grow up to be gay get that way not through genetics per se, but they get that way in the womb. So it's inborn but not genetic. And what happens is- What? That's fucking, that's bananas, dude. Dude, this is blowing the fuck out of my mind. Is apparently, uh, well, we know we know statistically from huge studies now, if a mother has uh, lots of pregnancies of males, every successive male will be a little bit more likely to be gay. So the farther down what? you go in that sibling uh, chain, the more likely it is that the later born males will be gay. What about the, f the females? Will the women also be gay? Or is it just babies in general? Or is it just male after male after male after male? This is, this is fucking insane. Like, how does that observed? How does that happen? So this has been studied in many populations in the world, large numbers. Why would that happen? It's rigorous. We know that this is true. So why would that be? Well, it looks like it's a kind of side effect. The mother's immune system appears to be reacting to male hormones and maybe dampening them down a little bit. And this oh. results in something called the fraternal birth order effect, which is that later born males are more likely to be gay. Interesting. That's so we okay. So like I, I I don't know because it sounds like they they have like some evidence to suggest it, but it may not be like one hundred percent. So that sounds really interesting. So if you have like a boy, you you, you shoot a boy out of your 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 vagina. Every time you have a boy, they they may become a little bit. They have a higher, uh, you know, maybe this kid has a ninety percent chance to be gay. Then this has like a, oh excuse me, ninety percent chance to be straight, eighty percent chance to be straight, seventy percent, etc. And they're saying it's because like, oh, maybe the moms adapting to their hormones and they're like dampening the male hormone, or like, what if it's more of a social thing though? Uh, maybe that's like weird. But like, you have a boy, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna raise this boy like a boy, okay. Uh, and then maybe for whatever reason, you have another boy and you're like, yeah, I'm going to raise the, like a boy, but not to the same degree from a social perspective. I'm not going to like, heavily reinforce masculinity onto my boy, uh, maybe because little boys are assholes. I don't know. And then maybe that's why it happens. I don't really know. I know that's like a weird theory. I'm not even saying that it's like smart. I'm just trying to like, I'm just trying to talk, I'm talking out loud. I'm thinking out loud. You know what I'm saying? I just wonder what it is. That's so interesting. It's a surprising finding because it suggests to us that some men are absolutely born gay, but not because of genetics. They're born gay because of the, the birth order in terms of the, some sort of effect having on a, woman, a woman's system, which is reacting to her um, children's system. And it only occurs in males. It doesn't occur in females. And really? That's part of the reason why the theory is it's an immune response because it doesn't occur with females, it only occurs with males. That's so weird, bro. I'm fucking, why would that happen?
Because my thir first thought was like, okay, we go back to this other thing where it's like if you have successive boys, there's a higher percentage, a higher chance that they're going to be gay for whatever reason. I don't know why all these bees are different sizes. I just I can't fucking write. And we were talking about before, like, you know, you have your fucking like 90 nice chance to be straight, 80, you know, 70, 60. But this is only observed across like boys instead of like women. So I wonder what that is. To me, it's possible that 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 um, it's possible that the um, that it's a social thing because maybe like young boys are like difficult to raise and maintain like masculinity, or have they also observed single parent households? As well, is there like a pa factor of maybe there's a higher chance to have a gay or kid if they don't have a father figure in their life? Is there an aspect there? Um, but then also, I'm fucking blind blown. Because also, if there's an immune response, I would imagine that it would dampen testosterone. So your immune response would like that. This would be like a dampening of testosterone. But so why wouldn't they dampen estrogen if you're having a bunch of young girls? You know what I'm saying? And then if that's true though, which maybe that makes sense because it's a woman and maybe there, there's like a bi there's like an immune response to dampen testosterone in pregnant women because women are men or oh my God, women are women. So like they wouldn't want to dampen estrogen because they're women and that's more natural to them. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. If that is the case, though, then that, there, there would be an association between like having testosterone and being gay or straight. Like, if you have more testosterone, you'd be straight, and less testosterone equals gay. Is that true? I don't know, bro. There's too much fucking. There's a lot. There's obviously. There's obviously a lot. This is all just hypothetical shit. Born out of the same womb, so that's something I've colloquially called womb gay. The female body sees its testosterone as an invader. You're more likely to mis miscarry a boy. Is that true? Nearly twice as many boy babies are conceived as girls. Wait, what? But they are much more likely to miscarry. And the birth ratio is roughly 105 boys to 100. Wait, so wait. Characters to after birth uh, male babies are also more likely to suffer. Made. Wait, what? All right, that's fucking crazy. So not only are boys more likely to be miscarried, but they're higher chance of having suffer major illnesses. What the fuck? <sighs> I wonder why. So like, is that because of it's per, is that actually because it's perceived as like an invasion on the body? So if that's true, that makes a ton of sense. That testosterone is perceived as a bodily invasion, and so like a, a woman's autoimmune response um, or whatever is to like suppress it, which could potentially make a kid more gay. Which means that estrogen in men, estrogen inside of men, has a factor of whether they're gay or straight. So wouldn't that mean that like testosterone in girls would have that same factor? And then in some cases, some trans people, some, not all, some trans people that are, are biologically men but like identify as women could have like an increase if they if you increase their testosterone, you could potentially reverse the dysphoria. Not in all people. And wouldn't just but I, I would I does that make sense? And like more testosterone in girls would make them more of a lesbian? Does that make sense though? But then we we're saying before, it seems like most people are 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 Feminine, even lesbians. I'm so, this is a lot. I'm, no, I'm not saying testosterone in girls would make you not straight. I'm saying like more from like when you're in like the womb, maybe. Like I don't think that if you introduce estrogen, like I have a friend. He's a, he's a really good guy, but he lost one of his nuts. <laughs> he lost his one of his balls when he was younger, so he has lower testosterone production. So, um, although that's lower testosterone testosterone production. Yeah, and these boys would have lower testosterone production because of the woman. Or maybe the woman... Wait, maybe the woman's autoimmune response in the body, like the pregnant woman, is to release more estrogen, which would have a negative impact, or not even a negative, a different impact on the boys, possibly making them gay. Is this gay math? Yeah, bro, this is fucking gay math. This is blowing my fucking mind, bro. 
gay math is blowing my mind, dude. I'm just trying to understand it. And I'm not going to understand it today or probably ever, but I'm like just trying to like rationalize like why these things are happening. It's so interesting. It's so interesting. Would that mean that we have a higher weight? Okay, because this gets even more complicated. Because if there if there's a response in mothers, if there's a response within like mommies, within your mom, to produce more successive gay boys, but not more successive gay girls, wouldn't that mean that there more people have a higher or more boys have a higher chance of being gay than women? Right? Doesn't that make sense? But then there's also we have like a public factor of shaming boys for being feminine, but we don't really have too much of a problem with women trying to be more masculine. Like we know that we have like masculine men, like in our society, masculine men are perceived as like number one. Um and then it depends on what you look at it from a business sense. Masculine women are number two. Like masculine women are perceived as number twos from like a business or a support structure model. And then like feminine women are can see like number would be treated as number three. And then masculine or feminine men are conceived as like the bottom of the barrel. And this is more from like a workplace structure. If we look at it from like a, a, an attractiveness structure, I would imagine it would look more like masculine men. I thought men looks like shit. <laughs> then probably feminine women. Um. Oh my god. More then probably feminine women because it's like it's, it's perceived as more normal. And then masculine women, and then a feminine men would be still considered like feminine men are are considered like the the lowest tier in like any structure that we we could perceive. Is this by a lot? Oh, dude, this is so fucking confusing. Because it seems like there's a higher accept. Like women are women. Men are discouraged from from sleeping with other men when they're young, but women are like it's actually a very flexible thing where women aren't encouraged to sleep with other women, but they're not shamed as much. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to figure it out. And so it allows women to explore their, their their sexuality where like even straight straight women are like it's still not weird for straight straight women or people perceived to be a straight to be a little gay like your average woman. It's like, yeah, because there's not this um, it's there's not like a lot of uh, societal pressure against them. I'm just trying to this is there's just so much information here. Interesting. I wonder what like the male. um. How many gay dudes are there? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you find. How do you find? Somebody look into how many gay men there are versus gay women. Um, it's because it's women experimenting with other women is seen as strictly sexual and it's fetishized. Yeah, I think that's part of it too. Um, but I don't think it's just that. I don't think it's just because other women experimenting with other women are seen as sexual or sexy. Because as an as a like. As a father, you're not going to be like, yeah, it's okay for my young daughter to play around with this other girl because it's so sexy to me. I'm going to jerk my dick. Like that's not what what it is. I think it's more when you see, oh, when you see another. Oh, dude, it's like one of those things we were talking about before. Like women tend to be feminine for the most part, even gay women. So it's, I think it's more of a response of like, oh, that's a gay man. We have to masculinize our, our our male figure in our family because that's a problem if we don't masculinize that male figure. And so like we don't we don't stop young girls from experimenting necessarily because the signs aren't there as strictly because you're not usually seeing like a more masculine like if you see a, a, your your young son being feminine you'd like hey we have to stop this but if you don't really do that for a feminine woman and since lesbians people tend to be more feminine regardless there are masculine lesbians of course but like you wouldn't identify and say that's wrong socially we need to correct that does, does that make sense i think that makes more sense I think that makes a bit more sense. And I think it's more acceptable for like uh for for like tomboys to exist than like femboys. <laughs> like tomboys like a girl dresses more masculinely. That's more acceptable. And also, also there's I think it's Russian societies. I forget the society. There's societies where like if you don't have a a boy, you'll socialize a girl to be like a boy. I know that sounds like fucking crazy, but it's I think it's just more socially acceptable to socialize like women into more masculine roles than it is to socialize men into feminine roles usually 
So there, dude, there's just so much shit going on here. It's just very interesting. There's just, it's just a very, it's just a very interesting thing to ponder. Huh. But it's called the fraternal birth order effect. Um, and I think the evidence is very strong that a certain percentage of gay people are born that way. We do not have good evidence that straight people are born that way. We don't bother to look for that evidence. <laughs> straight <laughs> that straight people sense. have been less interesting to scientists than gay people that makes um, sense. in terms of where they come from. And that's because... 3.4% of women identify as lesbian and bisexual, whereas 3.6% of men identify as gay or bisexual. Wait, so to me... Wait, hold on. Bro, I'm so sorry for pausing so much. So you're saying that it's for, for men, it's 3.6%, and for women, it's 3.4%. But like women are, women aren't discouraged from being feminine. Okay, but then we've there seems to be generally, and maybe this is like wrong, but like generally, because there are like masculine gay men and and masculine gay women, but generally in our society we shame feminine men, which would tend to be gay, and you can't just get rid of the gay, so like they don't have a problem there. But with women, we don't shame. Uh, there's no, I don't think there's an identifier. There's more of an, it seems like there's more of an identifier for gay men than gay women. Like you look at a man and you're like, oh, they're feminine. They have a higher chance of being gay. And so a young, at a younger age, they probably try to socialize the, the, the femininity out of men, like fathers in our society. But with women, you don't do that. So women are allowed to explore more. So there probably isn't, there's not a stigma on being a gay woman because we were talking about that before too. It's also hot. In society, so society doesn't stigmatize it, and then um, you don't stigmatize raising it as much either because you can't identify it. Does that make sense? And so, like, there might be the maybe the reason that there's like there's still less gay women as opposed to gay men, partially because maybe it's more maybe it's more like environmental for women, or maybe there's a biological factor that creates more lesbian women. What if there was a biological factor that created more lesbian women but didn't feminize them to like fulfill like mater like maternal roles like they were saying before to help raise kids for straight women from a scientific explanation does that make sense I'm not saying we should ever do that we shouldn't force gay people into a role of taking care of kids it's just very interesting there's just like so much going on here I can understand why I can see why it's fascinating now for scientists to talk about this kind of stuff because it is very interesting. There's a heterosexist assumption that straight people require no explanation and gay people require explanation. I mean, yeah, yeah, in terms of evolution, gay people do require an explanation. Logically speaking, we should say, well, that, that's not a very successful strategy, as it's called in science. It doesn't lead to a higher reproductive fitness, meaning it doesn't lead to more babies. So logically, you would want to ex explain gay yeah. people, but it's also a political issue that basically straight people have required no explanation and gay people have required explanation. I think from the scientific perspective, it makes perfect sense. Like, why would something that, like, usually, I think the meaning of life is to propagate life. So, like, when if you're propagating life, straight people propagate life, gay people don't, which is fine. So, like, that's probably why from a scientific perspective, I'd be like, oh, why does that exist? Like, why would there be that mutation? Mutation. Sorry, I don't think it's a mutation. You know what I'm saying. Like, why would there be that variance? Sorry. And there's something wrong with it. It's just that's why I would say. Like, and why some of the explanations it? historically have been rather unpleasant, like um, blaming mothers who are frigid for being oh, yeah. or overly clingy. Um, in the case of being gay, overly clingy mothers make gay boys. Is that true? I'm not trying to like feed into a negative stereotype. I don't know if that's true or not, but I, I, could, see, I could see it a little bit. I don't know, but that's very anecdotal. So maybe it's just that. Maybe that's just me. It, it, the, 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 let's just put down. It doesn't matter why there are gay people. Like gay people are fine. It doesn't matter at all. It's just like, is that do would clingy mothers create a gay son? But then wouldn't clingy fathers create gay daughters? I don't know. Um, what we know from cross cultural studies is that gay boys are more interested in being with their mothers than straight boys. Oh. And so it's not that the mothers are more clingy. It's that the boys are more tolerant of time with their mothers. I wonder what I wonder because there might be a mixture between both. Interesting. So we've studied much more about gay people than we have studied about straight people, and straight people remain largely a mystery um, as huh. to how they operate. What <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how you create incels. Overly clingy mothers. It doesn't create gay people. It creates incels. <laughs> that's very funny. And straight. We don't really know. We also don't know 
why gay people are attracted to each other any more than we know why straight people are attracted to each other. We have hints about smells and about genetic interactions and about huh. facial symmetry, but we really know very little about why straight people are straight and why gay people are gay. Bro, that... That was very interesting. That was a very interesting... I actually genuinely liked that video. It was very stimulating. That was probably one of the most stimulating things I've watched in such a long time.